when the excavation grows deeper and wider, timber sheeting will no longer be adequate because it is somewhat flexible. It cannot accommodate these high loads. The method that you generally employ if you are exceeding the limits of timber sheeting is soldier piles and lagging. Each of these members is a soldier pile and they are shown here being driven in the ground. They are generally spaced at about uh, 8 feet on centers and the space between the piles is filled with horizontal timber lagging. One of the many features of the soldier pile system is that you can vary the spacing of the soldier piles and you can accommodate utilities by shifting the locations of the piles. That makes it extremely adaptive and useful. Here's another illustration of soldier piles and lagging. Here you can see a crawler crane. That's the appropriate rig to um, use in driving soldier piles and driving piles in general. The crawler crane is extremely stable and it's sufficiently mobile to uh, get around the site. Here you can see the leads. This is the assembly that carries the soldier pile and also the hammer. Here you can see the hammer. The hammer rides up and down in the leads and the leads uh, also keep the soldier piles plumb. One of the important features of soldier piles is that you can usually muscle your way down through an obstruction or you can adjust the location of the soldier pile to try to avoid an obstruction. This makes it flexible and very useful in an environment where there are known obstructions. Many years after I began my career and I have probably driven hundreds or thousands of soldier piles, the specifications change and they now call for pre-augering the holes. You can see the auger here mounted alongside the leads. The goal was environmental and the pre-augering of the holes would limit the amount of vibration to adjoining structures. The problem that comes with pre-augering is that the auger cannot penetrate any obstructions and this uh, robs the system of one of its most important features. So if you're in an area with known obstructions, it would be very problematic to specify pre-augering the holes and you need to retain some flexibility as to whether or not you really uh, need this feature. You're likely to create a problem for yourself if the uh, pre-augering continuously hangs up on obstructions. Pre-augering looks like a positive benefit but in an environment filled with obstructions it simply is unworkable. Here you can see a completed installation of soldier piles and lagging. This you know by now is a whaler. It's a rolled steel section because the loads here are much greater. You can span greater distances with that steel member. Here is a strut which is also 
a steel member and you can span a much wider excavation. So this is a much improved system over timber sheeting. The horizontal members between the soldier piles are timber planks and you can see you need to excavate behind the flange of the soldier pile in order to install these planks. There's a lot of hand excavation involved in this system. This is an unusual feature. There are cleats which join some of the planks together and I suspect the uh, goal here was to make sure that the timber planks could not work themselves loose, but it's done in a very spotty way, so I assume uh, these planks were just a little short and he wanted this extra safety feature. Here you can see how a steel roadway plate has been used in place of the horizontal timbers. So the initial excavation can be lagged using this steel plate. It's accomplished uh, very quickly. The plate is uh, dropped behind the soldier piles and you can get the first uh, four or five feet of excavation uh, lagged very very quickly. Of course, that space has to be free of utilities. Here's a different system of soldier piles and lagging. The vertical members are the soldier piles and here you can see the timber lagging. Now, this is uh, quite different than the previous system the lagging runs in front of the soldier piles and they are attached to the soldier piles with a hook and a plate so there's no hand excavation. The excavation here can be done almost entirely by a machine and the boards are then installed in front of the soldier piles. By the way this is the neatest looking arrangement I've ever seen of a temporary supportive excavation. Uh, everything looks like it's been installed with a laser accuracy. This is quite unusual. This system is a patented system and I've never seen it used in the uh, metropolitan New York City area. This photo is in Minnesota. I don't know if the rules are any differently in Minnesota and this may also say something about the workmanship in uh, Minnesota. This is a very neat and attractive installation. Here's a completed excavation. It's part of an addition to the uh, subway system. Here you can see the soldier piles. The horizontal members are timber lagging and here is the first whaler. The whaler must be a very deep rolled section because it's spanning quite some distance and the struts here are pipe uh, struts in order to span this uh, wide excavation and carry these heavy loads. The goal here is to minimize the number of struts and give yourself plenty of uh, working space. I want to make note of all this diagonal bracing and incline bracing the loads on the system are not at right angles to the struts and there are lots of eccentric loads being applied so this requires very careful analysis. 
the soldier piles here also are resting on the roof of an existing subway tunnel so these uh, soldier piles have to be installed with uh, great care. Soldier piles and lagging are my go-to system. They really solve many, many problems. But when you're in a marine environment, when you're dealing with a very high water table, you typically would go to steel sheet piling. The unique feature of steel sheet piling are the interlocking jaws at the end of each sheet. This creates a continuous uh, wall of uh, sheeting which is uh, essentially watertight. Of course the area must be free of utilities. Here's a photo showing the installation of the steel sheets. Here a horizontal member is being used to align the sheets and keep them in a fixed location. It looks like the sheets have been driven in some kind of random pattern, but in fact this is very carefully worked out. These sheets are fully driven. The adjoining sheets are substantially driven and these sheets are only partially driven. Now this is a very intentional pattern. You never want to drive sheets fully because uh, whatever error there is in the plumbness or alignment of this sheet uh, cannot be corrected. You'll simply reflect those errors in the next sheet that you drive. So the proper procedure is to drive the sheets in a progressive way and join several sheets together and keep them plumb as a unit and only when you're certain that they are all plumb and all working together, then you can fall back and drive the earlier sheets to their full depth. In this photo, this sheet looks like it has just been threaded into the uh, earlier sheet. Uh, this man was probably up there guiding the two sheets uh, together. Here is a brief summary of the material that we've been covering in this first class on supportive excavation. The first method is a trench box. It's a uh, ready-made device that immediately produces a safe working area. The second method is timber sheeting. This is the most versatile and adaptive method and that's why you see it uh, in many many locations as you uh, walk around town. You can go quite deep with this. It's very safe. You can even pro progress somewhat below the water table and this is a system that works very, very well with existing utilities. When you have exceeded the limit of timber sheeting, you go to soldier piles and lagging. That's a system that you always see in deeper, wider excavations. When you're dealing with a high water table the system that you typically go to is steel sheet piling. It can only be used in an area which has been cleared of utilities.